Hi, fifth graders. We're here for chapter 21 of One Crazy Summer. But before we start, let's recap chapter 20. Here's what we know so far. We know that the Black Panthers are planning to have a rally to raise awareness about Bobby Hutton's death and to name the park across the street after him. Remember, we learned about little Bobby. He was the one that was unfortunately killed by the police when he was surrendering, and that made him the first Black Panther to lose his life for the cause, and the youngest as well. Um, we also learned that the children were invited to perform at the rally, which makes Fern and Vanetta very excited, but Delphine is nervous about the dangers that could exist at that rally. Um, she doesn't really want them to go. And also we learned that Sister Makumba takes the time often to listen to Delphine's worries and try to convince her, you know, that they're all part of this cause and they have to all look out for one another. So let's remind ourselves of our lens again. Remember, we're always paying attention to the different characters that we meet. Um, major and minor ones, the traits and relationships that they have. We're looking out for the point of view, how the narrator feels about the story. We're keeping an eye out for any themes that we see across the text and any changes that we see within the characters, the plot, the setting, or the lessons. So this next chapter, chapter 21, is called Eating Crow. That's a phrase that we're gonna hear about what it means. Maybe you've heard it before. It's sort of a figurative phrase, eating crow. The next morning, Cecile stood outside of our door and said, it's nine o'clock, why are you all still here? Vanetta pointed to me, it's her fault. Fern joined in, all her fault. She won't take us to the center. Yeah, she said, we can't go no more. Cecile turned to me, Delphine, what did you do? I spoke as plainly as I could. There was no use in speaking small mouthed. I told Sister Macumba we're not going to the free Huey rally two Saturdays from now or coming back to the center. Why'd you tell her that? It's dangerous, I said. The police shot a teenager for being with the Black Panthers. They could shoot Black Panthers and kids at the center. Cecile looked at me like I was stupid, but also with disbelief that I was her daughter. Did anyone shoot at you, Delphine? Her voice was calm and clear, not crazy. I felt stupid. No. Did they point a gun at you? No. Did anyone put a gun in your hand? No. Cecile said, y'all get dressed and go. They might still be serving breakfast. I couldn't believe that she'd make us go to a place, back to a place where we could get shot. But then I returned my good common sense. Of course, Cecile wouldn't care if we got shot up by the police. I told Cecile, we'll go for breakfast. We'll go for summer school, but we won't be going to no rally. That's just a pot of boiling trouble cooking. Y'all two, get in there and brush your teeth, wash your faces. faces. Cecile crooked her neck towards the bathroom. And as soon as Bonnet and Firm got up and left the room, she stepped closer into me. I was genuinely afraid. You watch how you talk to me, you hear? I nodded in reply, and I was no nodder. She wouldn't accept my nod. No, she said, you got a mouth, so I want to hear you. So this is like a character showdown shaping up right here between Cecile, the real mother, and Delphine, the one who acts like the mother. It's going to be interesting to see who backs down. Well, it seems like maybe Delphine's the one backing down because she nodded in reply, and she said she was no nodder usually. She wouldn't accept my nod. No, she said. You got a mouth, so I want to hear you. Mm. I said, yes, ma'am. That old-fashioned word just crawled right out. Seems like Delphine's backing down, right? Cecile grunted. That's the problem right there. His mammy. You sound just like her, like a country mule. I think that set Cecile off more than me, more than me saying we weren't going to the rally was me sounding like Big Ma. Cecile went back to her kitchen, fussing up a full steam like she was talking to someone, me, that she couldn't have seen us, that she couldn't have us here messing up her peace of mind, that she couldn't work with us in her house. Cecile carried on a full conversation on and on as we walked out the door. Crazy. Vanetta and Fern were only too glad to be headed towards the center. They couldn't stop rubbing it in. See, Delphine, you can't tell us what to do, Vanetta said. Surely can't. That was Fern. Because we're going to the center and we're going to the rally, surely are, and we're going to sing our song and do our dance, and you can't be in it with us. But Fern didn't go along with Bonette on that last one, not that I wanted to be in it. Still, a small part of me was glad. Fern had always been mine. Let's take a moment here to think about the character relationships between the three sisters. You know, this, you know, ever since Vanetta messed up Miss Patty, there's been this rift a little bit between them where Vanetta kind of goes her own way. Um, and in this instant, Fern is kind of going along with Vanetta in making fun a little bit about how that Delphine wasn't the boss of them. But um, when Vanetta said that last dig, when she said, and you can't be in it with us, 
Fern was silent, illustrating that the little rift between the sisters that exists where Delphine and Fern are closest, um, that's also another like division there. Delphine and Fern are close together and Vanetta is somewhat of an outsider. I wasn't in a hurry to go out inside when we got to the center, but I followed my sisters when they pushed the doors open. Vanetta and Fern couldn't eat the late breakfast and rejoin Sister Macumba's fat class fast enough. I found myself dragging behind them, feeling badly for myself. No one ever called it take back eating crispy fried chicken. They called it eating crow, and with good reason. Okay, so the phrase eating crow means like a take back, like a, like, uh-oh, you didn't get it, so you're going to have to swallow this. Not that I'd actually ever eaten a black crow, but with my words stuck in my throat and my eyes cast down, I knew what eating crow meant. I knew what eating crow was. I knew that having to eat crow when you were once proud and right was like swallowing a hunk of tough, chewy crow meat that wasn't about to go down easy. Remember, like she said, it's not like, it's not called eating crispy fried chicken, which would have went down nice and, and quick because it tastes good. Eating crow would go down like a big hunk of tough, chewy crow meat that wasn't about to go down easy. Interesting phrase, right? Sister Macumba didn't want to make me feel like I, sorry, Sister Macumba didn't make me feel like the nothing that I knew I was. Her bangles jangled about her wrists as she welcomed us back into the class. Everyone was practicing their parts in a play for the rally, and she said that she had, we had just arrived in time. They could use more actors for the class's reenactment of Harriet Tubman leading slaves to freedom. Vanetta was mad because Janice was to be Harriet Tubman. I knew I'd hear about Vanetta missing out on being the star of the play for the next seven days. Later, after Sister Pat led us through the calisthenics in the yard, Eunice came over and sat with me. Thought y'all weren't coming back. We weren't. Then why are you here? Eunice had a lot of nerve and a lot of mouth asking me why my sisters and I were back at the center. I had nothing to say to Eunice. I already felt bad. I shrugged, although I was no shrugger. Hey, that reminds me of the part earlier where she nodded, but she was no nodder. Hmm, she's changing. You were just showing off telling Sister Makuba how you and your sisters weren't coming to the rally like you're in charge. For your information, I am in charge of my sisters. Oh yes, yeah? so then why are you back? The last thing I would do was tell Eunice Ankton that we were here because Cecile shooed us away to write her poems. Cuz, I said. I couldn't figure out why Eunice sat there with me. It was bad enough to feel stupid. I didn't need anyone sitting with me reminding me of it. My sisters were having a good time. Fern and the youngest Ankton girl, Beatrice, taught each other hand clapping songs. Janice and Vanetta chased after Hirohito and his friends, but there was but they were only after Hirohito. He'd zig left and right, escaping the girls each time that they came within tagging distance. Finally, Janice managed to tag him and run. Vanetta was upset that she hadn't tagged him first, but that didn't stop her from cackling and squealing along with Janice. Janice and Vanetta were one in the same full. Well, let's pause here a second to think about another secondary character. We were thinking again about Eunice. Remember earlier when Eunice and Delphine sort of connected a couple chapters ago because they were both the oldest siblings? Here again, it says, remember, Eunice sat there with me. It was bad enough I felt stupid. I didn't need anyone sitting with me reminding me of it. They are sort of drawn together. They have this slight connection, even if they're kind of like angry with each other a little bit. They also have these similarities. I wonder if they're going to become friends eventually. Something I'm going to keep an eye out for. Eunice beat me to making a sound of disgust. I said, I wouldn't hardly be chasing after no Hirohito Woods. Me neither, she agreed. I hated telling her that I was only going into the sixth grade when she was going into the eighth grade. At least I was an inch taller than she was. Hirohito, she said, was going into the seventh grade. I told Eunice her dress was nice. Oh, they are gonna be friends, maybe. I told Eunice her dress was nice, and then she showed me the inside stitching. Once I saw the crisscross of her mother's neat hand stitching, I decided I liked Eunice Ankton. She wasn't the big girl who thought her clothes were better than mine, or the girl who sided with Hirohito Woods and made me feel ignorant for not knowing he was half colored and half Japanese. We were two older sisters, watching our younger sisters playing games and running around making fools of themselves. We were both the oldest girls in our families, and we knew the same things. It's kind of a nice ending to that chapter there where we realize, yeah, it seems like Delphine and Eunice are going to become friends. So let's read, let's recap here chapter 21, Eating Crow. Let's summarize. 
who was in this chapter and what new things did we learn about them? Well, it was the same people as usual, the kids at the center. Um, we learned that Delphine stood up to her mother, but it didn't really go so well, and they wound up back at the center. What seems important, what are we learning about the problem? Well, it does seem important that Delphine's trying to grow up, make a stand for herself, say, you know, it's too dangerous to go to the rally, but just when she asserts herself as a mother, that's when Cecile steps in, finally, and kind of like, plays the motherly role and say, no, you are gonna go to the rally, you are gonna go to the, the place, you know, the summer camp, um, the people center each day. So it seems important that at the end of it all, Cecile did stand up to say the motherly thing. Whether it was right or not is a different question. Um, how does this chapter connect to what we read earlier? Definitely this um, chapter connects to the scene with Eunice earlier. Uh, a couple chapters back where they sort of made this connection. It definitely solidified here at the end of chapter 21 that Eunice and Delphine have a close relationship sort of with the same role that they have as the older sibling and they are probably going to become friends. Um, so last question here for chapter 21. How does Delphine's relationship with Eunice compare to her relationship with her sisters? So how does Delphine's relationship with Eunice, this new girl that she's kind of become connected to. How does that compare to her relationship with her sisters, Manette and Fern? Use details from the text to support your response as always. All right, boys and girls, so we'll see you again for chapter 22 next time.